Hello, everybody. It's time for Taiki Talk Tuesday, and I'm super excited to have you guys here. I'm super excited for our guest. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lauren Young Durbin. I am a career design coach with Taiki Career Coaching. It's Taiki. People are always asking me how to pronounce it. It's Taiki, like Nike, but with a T. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so I have these talks almost every week with subject matter experts, and I learn a lot. I hope you guys learn a lot. I really want to make this interactive. So if you have questions, just type it in the comment box and I'll make sure that we get your questions answered or I'll acknowledge you somehow. If you're just like, hey, great job, I'll go, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so today's guest speaker is Jennifer De Deegan. Degnan. No, very Degnan. close. <laughs> very close. That's good. <laughs> Degnan. Yes. Jennifer Degnan Smith. But I'm super excited to have her here because we're going to talk about feminine, feminine energy and how to use it in the world. So let me tell you a little bit about her. She has a PhD in Jungian and arch archetypal philosophy. Not philosophy. I can't read today. Psychology. I'm going to go back. We're going to reverse this. <laughs> she has a PhD in Jungian and archetypal psychology, an MA in applied psychology, and a BA in economics. Her career spans the U.S. and Europe, focusing on where psychology and business intersect, including consulting with global companies and startup firms and teaching organizational behavior to MBA and undergraduate students. She's currently co-teaching a PhD course on psychological on psychological and cultural impacts of technology, Pacifica Graduate Institute. She is dedicated to healing and empowering the feminine principle within individuals and cultures. This requires reimagining re the feminine from the way Western culture currently pictures the feminine, which is a narrow and out of balance with the masculine. Um, oh, sorry, which is a narrow view out of, <laughs> out of balance with the masculine. She writes, consults, speaks, and teaches, and appears on Peggy Talks <laughs> about how to find a new feminine through myth, images, dreams, synchronous, synchronous, uh, you say it. Synchronicities. Synchronicities. Yep. Synchronicities. That's as close as I'm getting, y'all. <laughs> uh, she also works with people to find their soul calling as connecting to the soul is key part of empowering the feminine. So join me in welcome, Jen. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Lauren, for asking me to join you. I'm very excited. So thank you so much. And I appreciate all that you've been doing for the Women's History Month this, uh, this year, all of the celebrated women. So thank you for that. Yes. For those of you who don't know, every day I put up a picture and a short bio about a woman who I admire and or, or I just like in general. <laughs> so. Um, so pay attention, okay, pay attention and keep an eye out for that because it's going up every one a day. And so you can catch up on the last 12 if you want to. So let's get started. Can you share your thoughts on the concept of feminine energy and its potential value in the world today? Sure. No, and that's a great question. I was, you know, glad that you used the word energy because that's the way that, you know, I sort of look at the feminine is in terms of it being a principle, but not really connected to gender or not, not not necessarily hard, hardly, you know, hard connected to gender. And for mm -hmm. me, it's about um, things that have been repressed in our culture, things like intuition, you know, things about um, our emotional lives, our creative lives. Um, there are things like having a, the feminine, it has a very um, healthy connection to the body, the somatic, appreciating that it has an intelligence and a wisdom all of its own. And, um, you know, the feminine's about soul and flow and um, just about being, you know, rather than all of the the doing. Um, and for me, the feminine, one of the biggest parts of the feminine principle is that it recognizes that we are all deeply connected. So it, it you know, um, it's, it's very important for community. And it also recognizes that the world around us is ensouled and that we're deeply connected to an ensouled world. So in terms of the value that it brings, you know, I think it's sort of all of those things is it um, helps us to see or helps us to really value our emotional lives, our creative lives, really listen to listening to our intuition and appreciating the value in and the wisdom in our intuition, and then really like creating solid community and and 
and nurturing and taking care of the world around us. So I hope is I hope that's clear that that makes sense yeah. to you. I realize I I jumped ahead. Um, oh, not in the questions I asked you, but uh, this kind of as to set the board. Could you define on a very basic elementary level what feminine energy is and how it's different than masculine energy and how how did it become feminine versus masculine or like how did we get those kind of gendered I mean that's a whole you probably teach your whole class on that <laughs> well and I and I think that there's I you know I don't I, I don't know that I'm an expert in sort of the whole history of how that how that came about I think for me the um you know you can look at it in terms of the yin and the yang sometimes I think even putting the words sort of feminine and masculine around it puts a gendered element to it that I don't necessarily think needs to be there. Maybe we'll come up with other terms or maybe we'll come with up with a bigger concept. You know, the way that I, the way that I look at it and, um, and from a depth psychological view, which sort of incorporates a lot of the Jungian view is that we all have a connection to the feminine, the inner feminine and the inner masculine. Everybody does, or the yin and the yang. And so thus it isn't necessarily, you know, a, a you know, gendered really in terms of that. So there's an element of um, we all need to be connected to those elements of the feminine, like the emotional lives, like the soul uh, for, you know, our psychological and for our cultural health. Mm -hmm. I, does that does that clarify things a little bit? Yes. Yes, it definitely does. It's basically complementary energies, however yeah. you want to define the word, yin and yang or feminine masculine. Is that right? Exactly. And there's a balance to them. So, you know, and right now our cultural culture generally favors um, the masculine side of things, right? The Which can be looked at in terms of things like, you know, the logical and the rational, the thinking function, um, the intellect, and um, there's a lot about progress and goals and kind of a linear view and a linear perspective and a linear movement, forward movement. Of course, mm -hmm. all of those things are important too. You know, we need a connection to the healthy masculine as well. We need connections to both. And they just they just need to be in balance. Rather than sometimes in our culture, the feminine is used to serve the masculine, right? The, you know, the or the the masculine becomes the more important of the of the two. So how do you balance them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, so this for me, this is the fun part. And then I think this is the piece that um, in learning, uh, spending my time studying depth psychology and Jungian psychology is it's sort of like you have to engage with the feminine to empower the feminine. So for me, it's things like, um, you know, working with dreams. So our dreams connects to, the, to our unconscious and uh, we can um, kind of look at get a sense of the health or how connected we are to the feminine and the masculine by looking at the like at our dream figures. Um, so for instance, I had a dream, like what kind of kicked me off in this area is I had a uh, dream about Dolly Parton, who, uh, you know, is, is, you know, fabulous, but at the yeah, time, I, <laughs> you know, she's this, she's this fabulous person. And, and in the dream, the sort of the message that came from Dolly was, this idea that, um, you know, that she's, of course, a very successful person, right? She's a very successful businesswoman. And, but she engages deeply with the feminine. I mean, either in how she expresses herself, um, I mean, and definitely has a very strong creative life. And so it would, her, the message, her message to me in the dream was, okay, Jen, you're kind of, um, you're focusing more on the masculine side of things, like the the rational and the logical. And listen, can you have some fun and wear some red lipstick and some rhinestones that you know have a bring in your bring your creative life back? Basically, is what what she told me. So, you know, that's one way of um, engaging with the feminine. It's like looking at what the, our dream figures are telling us. Our masculine dream figures can also tell us uh, can reflect a little bit about the health of our inner masculine too so which I have found very helpful um and and others that I've worked with have too um the other way of of engaging with the feminine is thinking about the myth and the stories uh that we engage with so like um you know like the women that you're you know putting up in social media is you know 
helping us to see different examples of women or, or, and, or men who engage or wh whoever, however they gender identify it, you know, engage with feminine aspects. So it could be more of a warrior feminine, you know, fighting for civil rights. Um, so that's, a, that's another way. I mean, if we look at some of the movies that, that are out um, and how they show us, you know, different way, you know, how to engage with the feminine too. Um, one of the ways that I, personally have found, and actually there's a, a I have a chapter in a book it's on uh, terror psychology, which talks about how we engage, if we choose to um, engage with an ensouled world, like if we recognize that the world around us is engaged, uh, sorry, is ensouled, and we listen to how it speaks to us, uh, which is usually through the synchronicities, you know, through these sort of coincidences that have meaning for us, that they, that it can help us to see uh, where we are or aren't um, engaging with the feminine. So for instance, in uh, the, this chapter that I wrote about, I um, I spent a, about eight years, I traveled extensively to Greece and studied a lot of their mythology. And um, during that time, I went to one of the sort of most, uh, say most important ancient sites in, in Greece for the feminine, for the goddesses. And I had all these strange synchronicities as I walked through the land. And basically, it, it basically the land was telling me that I was ignoring the divine feminine, my own divine feminine. So through these sort of synchronicities that happened along the way. Um, and so, you know, if we if we listen to the land, that's another another way of of um, recognizing the feminine. Um, so those are some ways that I I mean, I don't know if you have had other experiences yourself or if you have other ways of acknowledging of of having those engaging with the feminine i think my self-care probably comes closest because i'm like well i want to take care of myself i want to paint my nails i'm gonna spend time doing you know just paying attention to i don't know that's probably not feminine energy so much as oh, okay. i do listen to my intuition a lot yes <laughs> I've learned to lean into that um, because oftentimes uh, you can rationalize or intellectualize and intellectualize a lot of things. But if you do a gut check, you realize that it's not quite true. And I've learned, I don't need to know the answer, but I can, if I can tell in my gut that by my intuition, that whatever that is, isn't the answer, then I, I tend to go with that. Good. I think that's great. You don't need to know why. You just need to know what the answer is, right? Or what the oh. or you're feeling. And how do you feel the, how do you know when it's your intuition talking? How do you know? Probably enough. The reason I I figured out, it was kind of like through the masculine energy, I guess like you're saying balance when I'm like, I keep like, seeing this thing and it keeps coming true and I, I took the analytical side like okay let's think of examples where this has been true and because of that it's like all right we're going to give more credence to this side so that that's kind of the my balancing act but I don't know I mean you just know that is not kind of what intuition <laughs> but we've been talked out of that, right? It's all supposed yeah. to be from here, but we can always, and I was, you know, one of the other ways that I find is I listen to the symptoms in my body. So yes. if suddenly I wake up and, you know, the jaw, you know, I feel something in the jaw or I feel something in the stomach or my ears are plugged. It's like, okay, what am I not listening to? Or, oh, but the yeah. body is, is a great place to connect to the feminine and the, the, the intuition. I think that's what I found. Yeah. I notice um, when I cry, when, if I tear up about something, that's when I know I'm hitting close to what the real issue is. Um, I may have to dig into that more, but it's kind of like, oh, this, this is closer to what it's really happening. We can look at that more, but um, all these other things I was saying or doing isn't resonating, but this is for some reason. So figure that out. Yeah. I do have a question. It's a um, definitional question. You said in soul. What, what does that mean? In sold. So, um, you know, <laughs> often we look at the world around us as 
I don't know, objects, right? That, you know, um, and, and often is for, you know, to be used for human purpose. But, you know, I have a deep belief that the world around us isn't sold, meaning that, um, you know, the trees are in sold, you know, that, that everything sort of has some sort of living consciousness or some sort of life in and of itself. And actually I was just looking at something, um, the science is now looking at, at the earth as having, um, a, a consciousness and it's maybe seen through the, you know, through, I think they were saying through the fungi that they're realizing that things are alive oh. that way. But for me, I've, you know, um, there's just an experience of of looking at the world as as if it's as if it's alive, you know, as if the animals are ensouled, have their own souls, as if the trees and the birds and the you know every everything around us has the landscapes. I mean, the ancients believe this, right? That that places oh. have these certain spirits that guard them. Um, you know, I love traveling to Ireland because I feel like I can feel the fairies in the you know, in the forests and things like that. So, and, you know, Carl Jung talked a lot about this in his psychology that believing that, you know, we're all connected to the, you know, this element of the anima mundi, the ensouled world. So this is, you know, this is often goes back to other cultures believe this, other times have believed this, and it's kind of bringing some of that back to life. Like, um, and I'm not being flippant, but it's like in Moana, have you seen Moana? I have not, no. Oh, there is it. I, I, I'm scared to watch it again because it hit so hard the first time that I watched it. So, and I'm sure there are going to be people watching this. They're like, oh, that's not right. It was years ago. And I, I it's it still like goes. So, there is a mountain or island who she's missing her heart. And it was stolen for some reason. And so Moana has to return the heart to this mountain. And so at the end, oh, spoiler alert, if you don't know Moana and haven't been around for the last 10, 15 years. <laughs> so once you get her heart or her soul back, you see her like grow as a goddess. Like she started out like very fiery. And then <clears throat> once she got the soul or her heart back, she was a turned into a green goddess mountain goddess <laughs> um again i saw this like 10 years ago but or however long ago it was but that's i was like oh yeah that sounds uh familiar like he was breathing she was a living being uh moana was too but the i can't remember the name of the goddess but um no i do have, kind of have a story about your Ireland, like like your ireland one so i went to mount vernon um the house of George Washington. And as most people know, George Washington has slaves. Um, and and so there's a section where the enslaved people are buried. And I had only gone once, I think, before. And I hadn't gone back to where it was. Uh, they made a point to find it. Um, and actually, I don't even know. I mean, I think I went looking for it. And there wasn't a sign up that I could see. I get lost easily. Um, in train of thought, <laughs> Vernon. So I didn't know that I was actually at the place, um, at the burial ground. And so, but I felt this energy, and it wasn't malevolent or anything. It was just kind of like your home, which is kind of scary because it was a burial place. But it's like almost like a hug does that make sense I don't know I was like hey welcome a welcoming maybe that's a better way like I wasn't scared I, I haven't had that kind of experience since but it was very strange and I found out that I actually was in the burial spot but I come from the right direction I've <laughs> seen the sign but I felt the sign instead like ace of base I saw this I did not see the sign so it's the opposite of ace of base but um <laughs> anyway again let me get back on track some of the um exam do you have some examples of influential historical figures who are commonly embody this the feminine energy uh do you know i can i can i 
comment on something before I answer that question? Because you sure. just you just said some fantastic stuff there. And um, one is I think the Moana example is fabulous. I mean, that is exactly you know what I'm what I'm talking about is this element of you know bringing the heart and soul back to the world and realizing. I mean, our health can only be you know, we can only be as psychologically and physically healthy as the world around us, you know, so that's, it's a really important part. Uh, so I think, and I, you know, that being lost, that getting lost was a big part of my experience of recognizing how important, um, you know, that, uh, that just wandering and getting lost and feeling pulled in certain directions or, and then seeing kind of the thing, the feelings, like whether it was a sense that I got, um, or sometimes like when I was walking through the streets of Athens, I'd come across some really interesting um, street art and I'm like, okay, well, what is the, which usually reflects the kind of what the cultural psyche is saying. And then what does that mean to me? And then a couple of times I'd wander and it came across these just very interesting, um, like women arts, you know, um, you know, like museums that were holding these really interesting women's women in arts things that and nothing I planned. It was all just the stuff I stumbled across and how important that was. So um, so I think that wandering um, is really an important part of of this and that that getting that heart back in there. So thank you. Those were I really enjoyed those. I enjoyed your stories. So um, and What's that saying all the, all who wander aren't lost uh, or something like that. Yeah. There's a saying like that. There is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No. So I was going to say just, I mean, that's one of the things is whenever you travel is like where, you know, just wander and see what, see what happens. You know, I have a tendency to find Chinese like fortunes from the cookies. <laughs> I, I went, <laughs> my husband's like, how do you always, and they're, you know, and they say, I, have a, I mean, like they're not always that kind of on the nose, but you know, but we'll find that. But what are the, what are the symbols in the, you know, what are the, the messages coming at you from around the, around as you wander, but um. So in terms of historical figures um, and the feminine, I mean, one of the, you know, and I've got a whole bookcase as, I mean, I know it's relevant for, you know, what you call your company is, you know, the ancient gods and goddesses bring in elements of the feminine that our current culture do not. So, yeah. um, you know, whether it's somebody like Aphrodite who brings in this, you know, sensuality and beauty that our, that our culture doesn't always recognize, um, Artemis, you know, the ancient Greek goddess Artemis, who has, you know, really deep connections to, um, to the, the natural world. And, you know, she's a warrior, right? She's got this warrior element to her too. Um, and she also protect, protects the adolescent, uh, you know, girls, which I think is really an important, oh, really important in our culture. So, um, so there's, you know, elements, there's also, um, uh, you know, Athena, who is maybe more of the masculine, also has deep ties to the masculine, but she also has ties to soul, to the more the more soulful life herself. She's the goddess of wisdom. So that's one of the ways that I started to reimagine the feminine for my own self was to, to get to know the, um, you know, get to know the goddesses, the Greek goddesses. And there's a lot of books. I mean, I've got them all. So, I mean, in terms of the significance for you, what what's Taiki for you? Ty did I get that right? <laughs> Yes, Taiki. Taiki, Nike. I like that. That's good <laughs> from my memory. <laughs> um, Taiki, I, I kind of can I always get that side. Yeah, <laughs> see, it's like a cornucopia of. Um, I'm looking around because I generally keep. Oh, here she is. This is my smaller one. Um, probably can't. Oh, there it is. Oh. You can see it's a corner. There. Oh, okay. You can't see her head. Well, it's a cornucopia <laughs> of, of um coins and she is about um she's the goddess of fate and fortune and so I decided to name my company Taiki because I wanted the women that I work with to be active deciders and of their fate and fortune so basically be the goddess your own goddess of your own fate and fortune um don't leave it in someone else's hands where you can take control um yeah. so yeah that's so that you can kind of see it as a version of up there but so yeah I keep her everywhere with me well not everywhere but at home she's several places that's what it means to me is, is self-determination maybe that's a better way of putting it even yeah. though as a goddess I guess <laughs> she was determining for other people but you can buy your own taiki yeah 
And it's being aligned with that, right? Because I do yes. think that we've got this call, that we all have a call, a calling of some sort. There's something, some reason that we're here. And so it's being aligned with that power within us, right? I think that's really, yeah. that's that's fabulous. Yeah, that one's mine. It's the Cycladic goddess is in the back corner. And so oh, okay. she's mysterious. They don't really know what her role was um, in in ancient times. And so, but they they think maybe it was something about birth, um, you know, the, the, you know, rebirth and birth and rebirth are sometimes found in funeral um, mm -hmm. excavations and things like that. So there's something mysterious, but very powerful feminine in that. So that, yeah, my, me too. I've got, got them around. <laughs> You can put your own thing on. You can decide for yourself. Like this is what she needs because exactly. Who can tell you it isn't. No. One. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so okay, well, I, I want to end. With, I always try to end with some practical tips. So we talked about how the two of us we can tap into our like how we know our intuition is coming through. So for people who aren't as practiced into tapping into their intuition or their feminine energy uh, what is a good starting step or steps steps uh well as i mentioned i would definitely um pay attention to dreams um and what i would also say is pay attention to the movies and the films that that kind of you know that that really interests you like i'm thinking the marvelous mrs mazel and that's a whole nother conversation but there was something like i could not stop watching that show something about her you know I don't know, being able to to kind of be true to herself and the use of humor in terms of, um, you know, the power of humor in that. And I know you talked about that in one of your uh, uh, your uh, I can't, idols. I can't remember which one it was, but um, but that is definitely I think it is listening to the body, like whether it's listening to that gut, you know, feeling or whether it's paying attention to the symptoms and having some, um, you know, paying attention to them and giving them. Um, some time and thought about why why you're feeling the way that you are in your body. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, there's also the place of images. So, um, you know, I had this, had an experience of seeing one of Edward Munch's paintings, which has like maiden mother crone. And oh. he paints the crone in kind of this dark, um, like close to kind of death um, uh, approach. And I thought, you know, that's not, I'm moving into that stage of my life. And it's like, that's not how I want to be the crone. So I'm going to paint a different version of the crone for me, you know? So, so I think it is interesting. It's again, sort of being aware of both the inner life, like the dreams and the intuition, and then mm -hmm. paying attention to, um, things in our outer lives. Like, are there images or TV shows that are speaking to our psyche? What are they trying to get through? What are they trying to say to us? So uh, does that, is that the sort of, uh, yeah. Thing? So, okay. Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pay attention to yourself. But we spend so much time thinking about what other people are thinking about us or looking at us. We could spend that time and energy looking inward in order exactly. to improve ourselves and be more whole within ourselves and with nature. It's the reason why they call it mother nature. Yes. <laughs> yep. That nurturing in instinct, that nurturing for ourselves, not just for everybody else, because that is yes. often what happens is it goes towards everybody. That's the whole another benevolent sexism. That's a whole nother conversation for us. But you know, there's this yes. element of the expectation that we take care of everybody, but it's about taking care of ourselves for sure. Yeah. However that looks for you, that looks different for different people. So yeah. Um, to quote RuPaul, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell can you love somebody else? Can I get an amen? Exactly. And exactly. And on that, <laughs> actually, that's how the show ends too. Oh, okay. uh, thank, thank you again for joining us. I learned so much. I mean, I, I really, I was just intrigued by the topic, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to ask her, have, be able, so I can, I can learn more because it was, it's such a fantastic topic. Um, and I hope to have you, so I can learn more because, like you said, there's so much to talk about. I'm like, well, what about this? But I don't know. <laughs> Well, thank but, you. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. So our next Taiki Talk is the 19th. So yes, next Tuesday, it's going to be with Ariel Nathanson, and it's going to be how to make smart investment decisions. We're flipping the switch. That's great. <laughs> like flipping the not switch, script. That's what we're flipping. We're flipping the script <laughs> next week, and we're going to have Ariel Nathanson. 
uh, who was here last year. So she's coming back. I'm really excited. Um, so she is going to, we're going to be talking about how to make smart investment decisions in 2024. And I hope to see you guys then. Same time, same fat place. Bye. <laughs>